you thought you had nothing going on tonight. Let's dance. The church of what's happening now. Wednesday night, March 30th, March 29th, I'm sorry. April Fool's weekend. Who gives a f Here we go. Little Michael Jackson, his brothers in 83, 84. Putting it together. Look at him. Here we go, look. So how many groups did the Jacksons have then? Because so there was the I I thought it was gonna be the Jackson Five when you told me about it, but it's the Jacksons. It's the Jackson Five. Then Michael Jackson and his brother left. Okay. All right. Michael Jackson went solo, and Jermaine went to Motown and started his solo label. With, he stayed with Barry Gordy because he was married to Barry Gordy's daughter. So the Jacksons left, and I think they went to Epic Records. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. And then what happened was, it, so the Jacksons replaced Michael with Randy Jackson, who was the baby Jackson, who used to play the bongos and was cute and shit, but he ain't no Michael Jackson. I'm surprised they let it, look, I'm surprised he left. So, Michael had to go solo. You know, he wanted to go solo, he didn't want to be in Motown no more, whatever. He sang the song to Ben. So it was Willard, then Ben. Willard was a movie about rats. A kid who had rats, and he'd attack, send the rats on you. The rats lived in the basement. He'd feed them. Oh, my God. Throw on a clip from Willard. This is the creepiest. That is not a movie I've ever watched. Yeah, and then they remade it with the kid. Willard, when I was a kid, was the scariest, most disturbing film I ever saw as a child. And I saw a bunch of child movies <laughs> I shouldn't have saw as a child. Wait till you watch this video or the trailer for it. Now, like I said, it also was released. They did a remake of it with, I forget the kid. His father was in hard times. They did a scene. What happened here, Lee? I don't know. The TV, the TV might have gone on the fence. I had seen, I did. Yeah, you had Willard, John Stewart. You want to do the John Stewart one? Yeah, let's see that. Okay. One. That's the one. Let's see if they got the trailer. This is a trailer? No, this is not. No, no, no. Willard, the move. Watch this. You're going to learn something. Like, watch this. Willard! <laughs> <laughs> look up here. These are his friends. They will do anything. For nope. Willard. He would take them to parties and <laughs> This is my nightmare. <laughs> look at this. Where your nightmares end. <laughs> You should not see alone. I'm telling you. So I was nine, and I was already getting traumatized by rats. That's why I hate rats. Now I'm thinking about why I hate rats. Not the Do you think you being naturally funny held you back? Yes, it made me very lazy at times. It made me lazy after I got into the store. I think about all those years. It made me very lazy because I knew I could go up there and smoke and mirror them. Now, at least, I'm giving them something. I'm giving them something about myself. I'm leaving something up there. And they're getting it, you know what I'm saying? Which I want to switch it up on this next tour. You follow me? I really want to switch it up. That's why I've been hibernating. Just, you know, you have to evolve. When I was on MMA's podcast yesterday, we talked about evolution. I learned a lot from MMA from evolving. Speaking of MMA, something happened this week that people in shock of. You know, and we need to talk about it because a lot of people ask me about this. You know, uh, the email numbers have been going down for the last six or seven weeks. They went from being 90 emails a week, 70 emails a week, to 40. Okay. But the subject, the main subject, I was looking at this Monday afternoon when I was answering emails. The main subject still is people trying to get their shit together and how it starts. And it starts with a plan. And there's a way to do it, and there's a way not to do it, because there's different situations. Tell him. 10 a.m. He turned himself in at 10 a.m. No, I, I know what time he turned himself in. What time did the incident happen on Friday night or Saturday see. night? Oh, Jesus Christ. It doesn't say in the article. He turned himself in at 10 a.m. <laughs> you say I deal with people. Let me give some shout-outs real quick here. I'll look it up for after this. Yeah, Dead Squad, Charlotte. You know, Jimmy Pitts, I love you. Ookie Spooky. Louis Zumud, 
Freddie Correa up there holding it down. The comedy. Pitway, Diana Mateo, and my man Pat Shea. I wish you a lot of luck. Bob Lalingus' dad is at home recovering. This is just to keep the lights on, to keep Lee in Chinese food. He's going to kettlebell class. Mm. Look at him. He's getting new clothes. He's he's thinking about in. moving a wife in. Then he wants to make her pay half the rent. Like yeah, of course she's going to pay half the rent. She's going to make more than I am. She's going to send money to Mexico. She's going to be the making cousin, more money than God. The cousin's got the chicken farm. And there you are sitting on the car. <laughs> you got the whole family living with you. You got people playing the drums in your house. <laughs> <laughs> anyway people playing drums you know what man let me tell you something I am Cuban but I always like the thing of being American you know what man I'll tell you what I still like I tell you what I strive for I wish that I could look you in the face Lee as my friend and my co-worker and my goomba and like I said you guess, guess what I did Lee what did you do I went and bought two tickets for us to go to the Lakers. Oh, nice. And you're going to go, really? Yeah, let's go down there. And on the way down there, you're going to sit there. And you're going to go, I wonder what Joey paid for these. And at one point in the night, I mean, you had a Laker game. No, no, it's not the Celtics. You know, we live here. We should support the Lakers. But at the end of the night, you're going to go, you know what, Joey? You paid four for those. I'd rather you would have given me a steak dinner for two fifty and give me, you know what I'm saying? Give me cash. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting there like a mukuli yak. You said and that the, to people? No, I didn't say that to people. But Lee, but no, 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 this no, no. is how you but would yeah, feel. It's expensive to in go. In a way, it's to, expensive to go to games. Like oh it. no! <laughs> and also, my main men on it. Dot com. Listen, that protein powder was delicious. I got the shroom tech. I took some today. I did a lot better in class. My geese still wet. I'm a firm believer in it. Listen, I know about this. I know about that. All I know is whenever I take on a product, I feel great. Whether it's the alpha, I'm back on the alpha brain again. I'm a little sharper. I mumble because that's the weed. You know what I'm saying? What are you going to do? I've been smoking since 6 a.m. What have you done today? Anyway, before we end, let's go back to it here. Go to honor.com right now and press in. Church. Boom. And get the 10% off. Of any product, not weights or anything, just supplements, and they deliver it right to your door. No drama, no money, you're fun. You like what you read, you get to stay on the program. And most importantly, people still, Alpha Brain, you give it a shot. You don't like it, you send it back, you get them 100% money back guarantee. What are these noises you're making today? You have the mic up too high. I'm making noises? Yeah, you keep sending it, and we can hear it. Stop it. I'm sorry, I have no idea. Anyway, I want to thank my main man, Lee Sayat. We had a great march. Thank you for making March uh, just phenomenal. And wait with to see what we have for you. And go to honor.com and use pr promo code CHURCH to get 10% off all of the great optimization products. What, and you want to just close with this song? Yeah. The rest of it. You like the hash? I like the hash? It's smoother. You worked out this week. You uh, spent the weekend with Mama. You came yep. to Bray with me Thursday night. Bray was fun. I'm starting to love doing comedy again. You go in your ups and downs like anything else in life. You just go through ups and downs. You do something so much, you take it for granted, you know, and uh, you don't realize how lucky we have it that I'm allowed to write jokes and go up on stage. It was rough going out and seeing people this weekend. Only people who knew waited and came around the back. I got a lot of tweets from people who were pissed off, but you're right there. That's the kind of club that you're right there. I don't want to take pictures of people on the street. Some great people came out, dropped off some albums. You got a little uh, Suavecito shaving cream. I'm excited to try shave, A little something from them. They got me hair products. But it's really nice to be a part of something nice for once. I was always a part of, oh, shitty things. And it's always really nice. Like, you know, somebody was saying the other day they had PTSD, and I giggled. And it's like when I leave the house, I always expect the worst shit to happen, so I'm not disappointed. So when something really nice happens, like those three nights, even in the green room, even Jack Jr. and uh, Johnny, Rock. Johnny Rock and Tommy Easter came down Thursday, and I'm really proud of him because he lives in his van. And um, I like the kid. I like the kid a lot. And I'm trying to teach him something from a different angle. Because he's seeing it. He's seeing that everybody down there that he's doing these little open mics with is coming from a weird angle. The first thing when you choose any career is to choose the right attitude going into it. And 
I had so many jobs and so many great opportunities, but I went into a bad opportunity. I went in there with bad attitudes. Not Were bad you negative attitudes. About it? No, no. I was not negative about the opportunities. I was weak minded about the opportunities. I never gave them a chance to blossom. Before you give up on an opportunity, give it a chance to blossom either in your direction or the other direction so you know exactly where you stand before you really give up on it. You know, somebody offers you a job loading trucks. It's 12 to 9 at night. Your girlfriend's miserable because she doesn't get to see you. It's always little things like that that you have to make a decision. <coughs> That's a subliminal control. Those little addictions where you try to make plans, but you don't. Like People just call me, hey man, let's meet tomorrow for coffee at 10. I don't think that's a good idea, dog. 10 was too early for you? I was up, but I was in no mood to talk to you. <laughs> what I'm time would you be in the mood to talk to people? Whenever it was something to do about cash and how I was going to get another package of Cash coke. o'clock? Cash or coke at those days. Jesus. That's... And now it's completely different. Like, what do you have now? Does weed control your life like that? Uh, There's nights I have a joint left. Ten years ago, I'd be going crazy. A lot of times I don't do the morning joint because I got no weed. Oh, so you used to go crazy because you didn't have weed? Yeah. Oh. You know, I think last year, didn't I stop smoking for three months? I well. Smoked, I smoked <laughs> a vapor pen. Well, yeah, you, and you took edibles. But I broke that mold. I still broke that thing. And then I realized that vapor pen don't do nothing. It's different. And that's why I used to say, look, for a year I've told you to get out of the house early. Now, you love it on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Oh, As a matter I can't of wait. fact, now you can't wait. It's a trap. The house is a trap. The house is a trap for you. If you really spend time, you have to have a look at your schedule. Like when you're when you're 20, why do you think you have roommates? Because you go, I can sleep in a closet for $200. But then you go to the kitchen and there's ants in your food. And then you see the limitations in your life and you move up and you move up. And But sometimes you're like, what am I do? What do, I, do? I don't even, I'm not even home. I'm the type of guy I don't like being home. I like being home. I just don't like being trapped. I like getting sun. You know, sitting outside under a tree writing is completely different than writing in your notebook. Writing in your room. Writing in an office. You know, typing on a computer in an office and writing longhand outside under the sun is two different fucking What do you think about that, cocksuckers? Oh, someone gave that to us on vinyl, didn't they? What's that? Don't you have that on vinyl now? Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to hear that on vinyl. Did I bring it with me? Yes, I did. Oh, that's so cool. Yes, I did. I'm telling you. Nice people came this weekend. They brought albums. Here. Yeah, this was uh, Jesse from Brea. And they sent us two cards in here. People fucking came out this weekend in full force. Tony Bennett, I want to be around. I look, can't tell. Look how young he is. Yeah, this is 1960 something. This has to be 1963. Yeah, because this album came out on my birthday. Really? Yeah, check it out. Go ahead, press in. Is the name Tony of the album I want to be around? Yeah. It's that should be a Valentine's Day Yeah, court. you know, a. <laughs> A friendship is a relationship that you bang that person. <laughs> and you, you exchange liquids, you exchange meals, you know, but it's a friendship plus 3D. Rule number one, especially with your woman, if you like a Why make a beef where there ain't none? You want to go out of the house for an hour to pick up something that particulates her. Or if you make sure you go out to see a friend or some stupid UFC fight. Sometimes I'm sitting there with my wife and I go, honey, you have the baby. Do you mind if I go to John Evans? And she'll go, no, I don't want to see that fight. No, shoot the John Evans, watch two fights, but on the way home, I'll stop making yum yum donuts. And I get a yoo-hoo. So when I walk in, I got a yoo-hoo and a donut. You follow for my wife, so she gets it. She gets it. That's the only way you're going to come back, is you bring a yum yum donuts. But five hours, even yum yum donuts won't save you. Right. 
Yum Yum Donuts can't bring you back until some woman's been sitting there for five. First of all, she would have been sleeping. Oh yeah, she would have been sleeping. But we're at a weird place where, like, when when you're when you first start dating, and I've never lived with a, a girl before or ever. Like, whenever they're there, you want to spend all your time with them. But now she, I'm not gonna see her at all this summer. She's studying for the bar, so I like I'm not gonna see her for our anniversary or my birthday. It's When's your birthday? The twentieth. How old are you gonna be? Twenty eight. I had a panic attack this weekend thinking about that. I I know that's young, and I know there's a lot of people out there who are like twenty. But it went uh-huh. fast, Lee. Bro, I'm can't be like two years away from thirty. Fast when you were twenty one. Uh, I met yeah, I met you at I don't know. I must have been twenty three. All right, so it's March. April fourth. April fourth. I'm sorry. That's how high I got on this show. <laughs> of two thousand six. Okay. Right now, I was going through one of the toughest periods of my life. Emotionally, I was lost. The longest yard had been out almost a year, and all the things that were supposed to happen did not happen. And it was just fucking traumatizingly. It was traumatizing. This was the beginning of 10 years ago right now. This was the beginning of a funk that lasted till I had just gotten throat surgery. Yeah. I had just gotten neck surgery. The the ball? The fat ball. Okay. I was recovering. I wasn't feeling good about myself. I was not healthy by no means. Not even in the ballpark, guys. Every time I walked into the doctor's office, they wouldn't let me leave then until my blood pressure went down. They'd give me the extra medication for me to walk out. Really? Yeah, I was walking around at 180 or 160 in those days. Now I'm walking around at 150 over 80, and after an hour, I'll go down to 130. That's how bad a shape I was in. Ten years ago, right now, March of 2006, if I think as I... Carlos and Joe had just had their beef, and I didn't stop doing blow till 2007. So that last year before I stopped doing blow was my year of just mental. I didn't know what I was going to do with my wife. Me and my girlfriend at the time weren't doing so well. We were at the six-year mark, and we had just gotten into out of a bad hole, and we were going right back into another cash-wise. Oh, no. What was happening? I got on the blow, and now I was from the longest yard money. Now my resistance had gone up from the blow. Uh, so now I was doing 120 a night. A night? $120 a night on a minimum. Four nights a week. Oh, my God. Of course it does. That's like 500 a week. It's 2000 a month. That's without weed. And food and rent. So that was the beginning of my hell. If you wanted to hash raise and said you want a cheddar on your roast beef, they'd throw you out of that. I can see that. I'm from a different society. I don't even know what the cheddar cheese is. That's for people who are disgusting. Focaccia. That's for people that you see in the uh, in 600 pound life. Yeah. Ask them, what's your recipe? Oh, look, cheddar cheese. <laughs> All right, you little believe- Joey here, in full effect, smoking some reefer. I gotta say, it's the best weed I smoke. And fuck, I smoked a bowl of this today, and my wife said, how come you're so pale? <laughs> I was pale from smoking. Picked up presents on vinyl. Listen to this masterpiece. A nice family. Jimmy Page at its best. Look at this. This has everything. That's why you get out. <laughs> Every day I get calls from Jersey. Yo, is that fire close to you? Yeah, it's around the corner. That's why I'm on the phone. You get that type of entertainment, huh? Conan, the other two mooks, the English, right here, baby. Zep. Yes. Eat the things, all right? Stop with the sparklers and shit. Right away, wants to dance with the stars. That's what the problem is. Everybody wants to be, there you go. How many is that? Where's the one in your fingers? That's nothing. We gotta put another one in us. You understand me? When it's a Tuesday night, you gotta go deep. If not, why take, why make the move? Why even make the effort if you're not gonna go deep? Well, it's Tuesday night, I have work tomorrow. Why do you swallow me so fast? How do you swallow? Throw them in your mouth like a pistachio, that's it. 
You understand me? Why all the drunk in the today's youth? Why they taste so funny? I ate them so fast, I didn't even taste nothing. My record's 22 one night by mistake. Do you wanna? Don't you want cocaine, cocaine, cocaine? There were some moments you oh. could not sit outside. Listen, I love being outside. You, you're depressed? Get vitamin D. Vitamin D is the best thing in the world for you. A couple minutes in the sun, I know, but the Joey, sun cancer. You know it's cancer sitting inside four walls, <laughs> breathing the same oxygen, okay? That's cancer. You go outside, you sit under a tree, you get close to the roots, it's making chlorophyll, you suck by that tree, you do some Dr. Belises, you get a little vitamin D, you, things change with 10, 15 minutes in vitamin D, you know. I get up in the morning, first thing I do is walk on the balcony. I got to get some air. I want to breathe. Hey, you see what happened the night before? It was windy, you know, something. <laughs> Listen, I'm talking about you in your house. You get up at 6. You know, you feed the cats. You, you clean the letterbox. You take a shower. You have some coffee. And about 20, 25 minutes in, open your door and you go outside. You go outside. I'm not, I don't think I'm agoraphobic, like scared of going outdoors. Yeah, you but, are. But you, you know, sit in that house for three days. It gives me anxiety leaving. Like, I, every, Why do you get anxiety? I have no idea. There's, everything I like is in my house. I know that nothing bad is really going to happen. Like, I'll drive myself nuts. I'm not saying I'll spend going to three a hours trying to figure out what to okay. eat. It's not that. I'm not bad. saying going to a strip club. No. I'm just saying walking in front of your house. Yeah. Under a tree, getting a little bit of sun, breathing, no music, no iPod, no nothing. Just collecting your thoughts for 10 minutes outside. I don't care how hot it is or how rainy it is. Even when it's rainy, I sit outside sometimes. You get hit with a couple of drops of rain. Oh, my God. But in a way, it gets you going. It's a different way of getting going outside coffee and all these things. You let nature get you going. If you were around 8,000 years ago, you'd wake up outside and you'd breathe that air. And guess what? People didn't sit around and talk, but they got up and killed them. Okay. I don't like eating outside. Really? No, I don't like eating outside, especially when it became in this country. People eat outside to show you they're outside. Look at us with an umbrella. Put me in the back, <laughs> looking forward. So if somebody comes in, I slip out the bathroom door. Well, I don't understand it at restaurants, especially when outside yeah, is no, the parking lot. No, that's a jerk-off thing. That's, since I, 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 I used to date a girl that that was a thing. <laughs> Let's sit outside. What do they call it? Susa Fresca. Yeah, Agua Fresca. Fresca. Put me in the back. <laughs> and I look forward. I don't want no outside germs. It's a dog. You ever see people handle your food? Oh, it they grab me nuts. the food and you know what I'm talking about. Like they have your food and they'll stop, talk, talk, they'll talk, and your food will be just sitting there out. Because you're you're looking at them. Uh, the oh kitchen. yeah, see, I look at everybody. I don't. No 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 no. Uncle Joey keeps that eye on that waiter. I got one eye on the waiter and the other eye on the door. The part that gets me because I used to be a waiter is like. The thumb at, in, the, in the drinking glass or the thumb touching like, your food as, it, as, they're, as they're bringing it to you. Or like if you're at like a... The thumb is the least of, oh. least of my problems. Really? The, the thing that bothers me the most is when they stop with your food to talk. And it cools down. And... That. No, it doesn't cool down. The breath. You're talking and my food and his germs <laughs> are sticking to your food. How do you know which way it is to the bathroom? I have no idea. I'm carrying food that way. <laughs> but you don't stop to talk to somebody. That's my point. And getting their breath on your food. Yeah, okay. that's what I don't like. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't I like the thumb. This country's worried about thumbs. And, uh, yeah, yeah. But it's different. I don't know. what It, it doesn't bug let the, Because, listen, well, okay. let me explain something to you right. that you need to understand before you get into anything. Okay. When you walk into a restaurant, you have to assume in the back of your mind that this guy scratched his balls and picked up your meat. You have to assume that the lettuce guy, because if you don't, you're an idiot. I try to put it out of my head, I guess. Yeah, we all do as Americans. You try to put it out of your head when you eat. But what do you think happens in a kitchen? What do you think really happens? You know that food that you like? All those, all, let me ask you something. All these restaurants that do bar rescue go to. Right. They're the restaurants you go to, the same type of food you like. You know, that dude that you were raving about, the, oh, yeah, carnitas on the sandwich. Listen, that guy will be out of business in a year. Carnitas is Nobody has come up to me in the last four weeks and said, I found this place. And they had a carnitas sandwich with Swiss cheese or cheddar. We discussed cheddar today. Uh, you so, hate cheddar. I don't know what it is. Because delicious. It's, not a, it's not delicious. It's not a good cheese at all. <laughs> Doesn't do anything to a sandwich. Cheddar's not Swiss. Cheddar's not Munster. So what cheeses are passable? American sliced thin. Sliced thin on, on turkey. Taste it sometimes. Thin with mayonnaise. It conglomerates better than that hard cancer. I don't think it's a cancer, but maybe. Who knows? I like Swiss. 
Swiss is a call for ham. Swiss is a call for turkey with a change. A little Swiss, a little Swiss on roast beef with change on rye bread. You have no idea what you're getting yourself into. You have no idea with the little seeds in it, a little rye bread with some roast beef sliced thin, a little pink, throw some salt and pepper or a slice of Swiss cheese or two, a little a shaved lettuce. Very important. Shaved lettuce. Is that little, little strips? It's little strips. I love the little and strips. And the slices yeah. of tomato on rye with mayonnaise. And then come back and you see your Uncle Joey. If that's not your sandwich, <laughs> I used to get pissed at my mom because I loved something when you, there's something about shaved lettuce that tastes different. Yeah, as tastes opposed like to like one leaf of lettuce. Like a complete that leaf, I take that <laughs> thing and I go, yeah, I don't want this. When they just put the leaf of lettuce and I don't want that. No. I like when they put the spinach in and all that type of stuff, like the spinach leaves. I don't mind that. Okay, but shredded lettuce is the call. When you go down to Jersey Shore, it's shredded lettuce. What part of that doesn't anybody understand? It's, I think it's laziness, I guess. Yeah, it's laziness. It's for complete laziness. That's why I can't, you know, you can't go to those places. Because if you go, you just fall into that trap. You just have to boycott those places in your mind. Everyone makes fun of you for, like, have, like your, your stances and stuff, but it gets you out a lot of bad, like, you never have, like, a really, like, a bad meal. No. It's just, like. I stick to my guns. Right, yeah. I stick to my guns. I love to try new things, but I look at the person who suggested it. And I look at the other foods he's told me about in his stupid life. Do you still take advice from me or no? <laughs> no, not even close. You, you're disgusting. You like carne asada on French fries. That's Who not doesn't me. like carne? It's delicious. That's, that's, carne asada that's, fries. That's just garbage, Lee. That's just garbage. It could be a pork knuckle. I saw that meat they served at that thing the other day. What, where? At that benefit I went to. That, it was disgusting. Yeah, bad meat. It's really... When they, listen, when, they, when people created all these meals... They have to evolve. There's nothing I like on a French fry. Except. I eat. Somebody calls you and says, hey, I'm having a party at that place. I ain't going there. Why? Because they have carnita fries. <laughs> I won't even step in the building. Uh, no, no, no. It's just little things that people, and then we go back on, mm -hmm. and then we get angry with ourselves. Right. I should have never came here. You knew it. 2,000 million people are not wrong. Jared tricked the whole nation into eating that horse meat. It's terrible. And if you say to me, well, Joey, it's a sandwich for $5. Do you know the sandwich I can make you for $5? But you have to go to the store. People Wouldn't you rather go to the store than have that tattoo guy with greasy fingers? <laughs> He's been smoking cigarettes. He could put on three clubs, <laughs> and the stench of his life is still going to touch that disgusting turkey pastrami they get that you're going to eat. $5, you're selling your soul. They're selling your soul, even for, to save the money. No because. nutritional value at all. Half of these places you go eat at now, dog, are all a fusion. <laughs> Hi, I was in a bar in, in, in Jersey, and I heard about this place called Five Fingers Burgers, Five Brothers. Can we go there and get a hamburger? Yeah, on your own. <laughs> you want a burger? Yeah, we're going to stop. Why are we going to stop? You don't get bored of any of these places? No, Okay. but it's the best burger. I'm not going to go anywhere else. There's no reason to go anywhere else. But the burger's the best burger in town. The thing to do is to go to Jerry's, get steak fries, go to Stout, get a burger, and bring it home. That's your best bet. That is the best bet. I love doing that. Okay. That's what I'm saying to you. I wouldn't go anywhere else for a burger right now. Nowhere else. The next 10 years while I live here. There's no reason to. The flavor in that burger, I've been all over the country. How they cook it, the pink, it's real meat. You never get sick there. The onion rings are tremendous in the iced tea. I'm not going to recommend anything else to you there. I don't know. I never had it. But when I want a hamburger, one of my friends, hey, I want a hamburger, and my friend Julius says there's a place in Sherman Oaks. Listen, then go with Julius. Right. Yeah. Go with Julius. But today, we're going to stop. And I guarantee you'll love it. Go to Dollar Shave Club, <laughs> pop sucker. That's how productive you were, all in one loop. So you get up from the computer, go in the bathroom, put the hot water on only. That's it. Hot water on only. Go out to that backyard and hit that toots roots Put that down and go in there now and put the cold water on so the floor gets nice and hot for your feet. And now you get in there and you, you got steam to open up your pores. And then you put the cold water on. If it takes eight minutes to smoke the bowl, it takes eight minutes. <laughs> so by the time you here. go back in there in eight minutes, it's steamed. Right. So now you smoke dope. You sit on the throne. It's steamy in there. The problem with hot air is it thickens in there. It's not good. It lurks in there like herpes. It lurks. It smells for a little while. But you flush it. You let the hot water turn cold for a minute. And now you kill eight birds at once. Don't. You know, your Listerine, you know. 
This is all right there. By the time I get out of the shower, my clothes are on Bedley. I already got the clothes. On the way in to smoke, that's what I did. I took a pair of shorts out socks and I throw them across the bed. That's productivity. I think multitasking has got a bad rap recently. That's not multitasking. That's being productive. That's not going any direction without an empty hand. That's what that's called. Not making a move without an empty hand. Why am I making this move all the way over there without an empty hand for? What can I take to the kitchen? This glass that's been sitting here for three weeks? Right, yeah. So now I got a plan. I'm going to go into that kitchen, eat whatever, boom, back to the bathroom, put the hot water on, out, smoke, go back, boom. By the time I get out, close, everything is ready to go. That's called productivity. Did you not read the memo? You're not supposed to come down here? No. My brother Joey Diaz told me that, that they were looking and to just come down and see some lady named Samantha. Who's Samantha? Right away, you got conversation. <laughs> Right away, you got conversation. You just make up a name? Oh, yeah. My, my, my friend Peter Patello told me to come down here <laughs> and see Samantha. But wait a second. How did you find out? I'm a college graduate. I've been looking for a job. You're just selling yourself. Man, you, you got one minute to talk. 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 You're a dummy. You're not really a dummy. Right there, you're playing a dummy. My friend Mike, Mike, Mike Jesus told me. Just start talking. Start talking. Her name is Samantha. I just want to drop this off. You mean Rebecca. Boom. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And then oh, let me put Rebecca on there. Guess who's getting a call tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning? Rebecca. That little forehead you got. <laughs> <laughs> in real life? I can't finger confidently. I looked at my fingers about two weeks ago. I'm like, who would let me finger these? I don't have fungi nail. I don't have the Mickey Rourke fingers, the fingers of death. You ever see Mickey Rourke's fingernails? No. He's got what I got on my toe on his fingernail. Oh, no. He's got fungi nail on his toes, on his hands. That's not good. I have just fucking fingernails that, you know, I've had chlamydia on these fingers. Every <laughs> This finger there had the herp. This one had <laughs> each one of the different. Oh disease. please! I had this. These fat kind of hands are disgusting. <laughs> I looked at them the other day. My hands are still soft, but look at these. You know, you can't get a nice job with dirty fingers. My fingers are not dirty, people. My cuticles are out. They're not. Uh, what do you call that when you polish them? Whatever when you put the fucking thing on them. You know, you file them. <laughs> this, what's going on with you? I wake up this morning. The sprinklers on your face. Are these stars killing you? You need another star anyway. <laughs> you know, Are they killing you? Let me get you another one. Yeah, let me get you another one. You're looking light tonight. You know oh, my saying? God. What, what did I have? Uh, Seven? That's mad. I'm on your hand. I'm your gun ahead. You're the master of disaster. What you saying? Yeah, you're the master of disaster. That gives me confidence. A nice chicken cutlet. Cold. You put some salt and pepper on it. A little ketchup and just eat it walking around. Nobody knows what's going on. Ketchup? Oh, my God. And you smear it with the fork <gasps> into little valleys. That that can't be allowed. Kind of the fries. For all the rules you have, you can't be smearing ketchup on chicken. Tremendous. It's a light smear. <laughs> I don't dope it up. That's too much sugar. You just give it a light smear just to throw the chicken off. I told you that I was putting mayonnaise on my burger, and I told my mom, and both of you yelled at me. Oh, yeah, because you're a savage. That's why you poisoned your dad. He's probably coming with his canteen. He's ready to go down. <laughs> No one got poisoned. Nobody puts mayonnaise on their burgers. They do to Wendy's. That who would eat a burger at Wendy's and get sick? You would. I know. I've never once gotten uh, food yes, poisoning. Yes, you do. You you don't know it. Those things sit in your stomach, and they start eating away your bacteria. And little by little, you got little pebbles down there, and then you got to shave your head and walk around and hang out with weird people. Keep it up. Those days are over with. You're a new man. You're throwing kettlebells. You're looking good. You got a little sun to you. They're fruitier. Oh, I've never tried those. Yeah, sizes. you okay. can get the get. Make sure you get a two hundred because you're in training. Don't let me find out. I'll, I'll make them go on the computer. <laughs> you know, I got the girls. Look at the record. Yeah. yeah, I got the girls on the record over there. <laughs> but uh, you need to get the fruity ones for your dad. They got fifties and twenty fives, and get them a cheap at you. You know, spend a yard or two. You know. What are you going to do with all that money? What happens if, you, if I hit you in the head tomorrow with a chair? You die. We're going to leave all those millions to under the mattress. <laughs> Stop. Who are you going to leave all those millions you got to? Wolfgang Puck. Wolfgang Puck. <laughs> you know, you're supposed to smoke reefer. They say if you smoke reefer, you got 2020 vision. You know what I'm I've never read that. Yeah, I heard that for years. No glaucoma, you got 2020 <laughs> vision. Everybody else walking around with binoculars in their eyeballs. Me, I can't see out of my right eye, so I don't get it, Lee. You tell your mama I get you home. 
Oh. The book is working. Are you kidding me or what? Wednesday night, we're here. We're back. Who do you think you're dealing with? Some novice? I'm going to take the night off because of surgery. You got to shoot me in the foot for me to take off from you guys. As a matter of fact, like I told you this morning, I missed you. But we're here. Either you're in or you're out. You understand me? Either you're in or you're out. Good idea. Diesel, New York. Right, Tower Diesel. That's a couple of years ago. <coughs> there you go. There you go. That's a beauty right there. That's a money shot right there. That bond is activated. Look. There you go. Here's what I'm talking about. He's a soldier. You understand me? Look at this. Crying again. What is in there? Going deep tonight. We got no edible plan. I'm taking a night off because I got the anesthesia. I got the oxycontin. I got Larry's happy pills. I got reef. I got everything in me. So I got to calm down with the stars of death. Lee, drink some water. You're going to be fine. You let you go. What's up, people? Get that bong out. Get that pipe out. I'm not sure what blood type I am, but I'm going to need a lung transplant. From the tutor to the snooter. <laughs> I look like Martin Sheen when I come out of the war in the apocalypse now, huh? Who does bong hits like that, people? Nobody. This is real. We're here. No drama. You don't see no poster of buds. I don't got a guy here with dirty long hair with his toes out. What are we waiting on here? Let's do this. I'm not waiting for anything. Oh, open them up. I can't. They're open. No, open them up with your fingers. Oh. Oh, my God. I can't. Oh. Yeah, those are eyeballs, ladies and gentlemen. You understand me? That's the goal for you to be a soldier. You understand me? Look at them. Sweat and perfume. You don't even need an edible plant to the level I took you to. Look at your eyes. If I have a cigarette right now, I can yeah. light that cigarette in your eyeball. I've never tried that. What, what is it? What about me? Lighting a cigarette in your eyeball? Oh, I, th I thought you meant just lighting a cigarette to get higher. No, you don't want to smoke cigarettes. No. What about his mango one? Let me explain right. something to you. There's nothing better. Professionals know what I'm talking about. And waking up in the morning. Blasting a cigarette and then blast the joint, then blasting another cigarette and a cup of coffee. Bam! <laughs> Stone to the gills, people. I'm hoping you do the same. What do you call that move? Well, this is the salvation move right here. Espiritus malos. <laughs> Go away. If... Wait, look at Don't forget. Don't forget. <laughs> There's no announcements with you. Crank that mule, Lee. You're like, Joey, what's with the piano? Just listen. It's July 13th, 2016. Is it my turn? The church of what's happening now. I didn't Uncle Joey. Lisa Yat. Is it my turn? Legendary emotions. Is it my turn? A little PM dog. Jersey City, New Jersey. What's the story, Lisa Yat? That's a that's a uh, change of pace, man. I I'm not really a big R and B person, but that was it's it, it, it grows on you. Like They're at the beginning band. it's a little boring, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, th it throws you off. Listen, they got like ten jams. That'll take you around the world and back. Nobody knows about them. I think PM Dawn ended up. I lost track of them like after the third album, maybe. Okay, I've never even heard. But of them. the second album, whatever came out in '93, was one of the best albums I've ever heard in my life. What about it? The PM Dawn album. I used to go to this gym in North Bergen, and they used to always play it. The one guy was gay. And he would always play this album. And then once I got into the whole album and the flow and how they laid it down, these guys were onto something. That song, Boomerang, that song is from the movie Boomerang. These people that come to you and say, I'm doing this in a year, they're giving themselves time to be scared and to talk themselves out of it. What's going to happen in a year? That's different. A little bit more money? How much more? How much more? How much more? Yep. What do you think that's going to happen this year? Nothing's going to happen bad in your life? You don't think your car's going to blow up? You don't think you're going to need new tires? You don't think your girlfriend's going to want a ring? Or you don't think your girlfriend, your dog's going to get sick because he ate a chicken bone and it's going to cost you 900 What's going to happen in a year? Nothing. Unless you really are making 3200 a week 
Now, you got a plan like that. You're walking out of here, Joey. I'm going to work for 20 weeks. I'm going to have 60000 I'm going to leave here with twenty five. unless you got that plan. But if you've got some plan that in a year and a half, Susie's going to have her degree, this is your dream. It was a plan without a plan, Lee. It was a plan. Wanna... Listen, Lee, it was a plan with a small poss- with a, with a high possibility of failure. But if I failed, I had a place to go. Well, and I could you... start all over. I'd go to Boulder and try to be a dad and eventually kill one of these people and eventually get what I deserve in life. When did it change? Was it, did, it, did it take until you got off Coke? or No. It changed when things happened every 90 days. Something happened every 90 days. Just a little improvements? I got here January 29th. I drove into town. I went to Acapulco. I ate the all-you-could-eat Mexican. I took a shower in an RV, and I went to the county store on a Monday night. I saw Wheels, and I saw Eddie Griffin, and I saw all these people. And I, uh, somebody said they knew me, and they put me on stage. I did three minutes in front of three people. Right there alone, I could put it on my resume, comedy store. But I never understood what I call you on a Friday. You'd be watching TV during business hours. If those lights are on, you got to be making that money. You can watch TV at night, don't you? I understood that no TV in the daytime means you're working. Anything happens better than watching TV. When you're sitting there getting 22 text messages, can't work at the house, you know, and ask me something that's going to throw me off completely. While you're doing that bung, let me get some shout-outs. Stupid fuck. What'd you do? Do another one there. You're leaving me five. Another one? Okay. Sure, you can't walk on one leg, you know what I'm saying? That's so what, sad. What kind of bong hit is that? Finish I don't know, man. I'm trying day. not to cough and die no, on this no, podcast. No, let's go. You got to hit it hard. Let's go. You're doing these half of <coughs> fruitcake po- uh, hits again when I'm, I'm not, not doing watching. That. What are you talking about, fruitcake Come hits? On. Put the bong put the bung down. Rest it. Let's go. Rest it. Let it get some air. Rest it? There you go. Okay. Because you're moving around too much. I can see that thing How do you falling. move it too much? Go ahead. Spark that soldier. You told me to put it down. No, no. Spark it. I thought you were going to put it on the table. Oh, oh take it from the table? No, go ahead, Lee. Don't worry about it. I thought you were Jesus doing something Christ. different. There you go. You got to hit it slow. You got to hit that some One more. One more for the Marines. Leave the, no, you were doing them good before. You know what to do. Leave the pipe over. <coughs> Let it burn. Suck it in slow. Stick your finger in the thing. Stick your finger in it. Move it around a little bit. The weed. There you go. There you go. Now, hit that soldier, Jack. It's nice and slow. Now you, you, now you filled, you clogged up the hole with your fat little horse with the finger. You oh, embarrassed me. Yet. Huh? That was terrible, too. If you're going to hit the bung, <coughs> this is how you need to hit it, all right? 26 years old, four years in college, don't know how to hit I a I'm a bong hitting class. First off, you clean this shit out of here. You don't want to get some of these THC breath in your breath, all that THC germs in your germs. So you clean this out. You get yourself the blue cookies. You put it like this. Leave. It's a slow death. Let's pretend you have an ant. You don't want to burn them to death. You just want to put the light close to them. Like, <laughs> something like that. So you light this thing very fuck large. I got to wet my lips like a trombone player. <laughs> nice and slow. Absolutely. Lighter, A. Hey. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> <coughs> That's Dr. Belize breathing right there. Now we got to finish it. You see what I'm saying? It was a slow torture move. Did you see it? No genius. I'm no better than you. We put our legs on one pants at a time. Now you got to do it again. Slow. You say slow, but how do you have that much breath? You got to plan it. You got to slug slowly. Not like a gorilla. Slowly to get the smoke activated. <laughs> Come over here. Sit next to your Uncle Joey. You need to. That's right. crazy. Hold on to the bump. Okay. And you're going to hold on to this, okay? This is loose. This is like a trombone. <laughs> you see that? Okay. Yeah, okay. Hold on to that. All right. Okay. All right. Hold on to that. Don't drop nothing. Okay. Where's your control hand? On the trombone. Okay. Right there. No. What, what's that? I'm, uh, okay. What's that? What are you hitting the camera computer? so people can see? No, no, don't. Okay. All right, ready? Nice and slow. 
And now kill it. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> okay. Uh, you're a soldier of fortune. What can I tell you guys? I had surgery this week. Have a great night. Stay black and thank you for being here. Ha, ha, ha.